Hey guys, so this should be a really fun video. This is going to be a teardown, I guess you could say, and a, I guess a walkthrough, I don't know, I don't know what to call this. It's a repair, an Atari 2600 repair video. So as you can see, here's my Vader, and it has a problem, as you can see that the screen does not look right. And let's get a game going. This is what it looks like while it's playing. Just some graphical problems, basically. Um, and I tried the obvious stuff like cleaning the, um, blowing the games out with canned air and trying to clean out the cartridge slot, some computer cleaner. And I got to thinking, you know, I had another Atari in the garage, this Sunnyvale, you know, so I wanted to play, I got this out, and it's funny because you've got some, you know, you have your Atari and it's, it's as far as you know, it's working fine, you haven't played it in a while, you get a, uh, an urge to play, and you find yourself disappointed when you turn it on and all of a sudden it's not working. Same exact thing happened with the Sunnyvale. <clears throat> a slightly different graphical symptom occurred. So I had seen a teardown of the 2600 before. I knew it was pretty simple. And I thought since I had two units, I may as well try to swap out the chips. Similar to what you would do with an arcade board. You're trying to um, diagnose it and see if I could get one of them to work. <clears throat> And basically what, I could, what I'm going to do is show you the process I went through and how I'm hoping to resolve it. So this should, we should have an exciting conclusion to this video. So, uh, yeah, so basically you see what the problem is. Um, so we'll move forward here. We could actually demonstrate, let's go ahead and demonstrate the problem that I had on the other unit too. It's a little dustier. And I have a neat coaxial adapter. That allows a quick change out without messing around with one of those uh, RF boxes. So, just have you see what's going on here? So, the Sunny Vale. Similar issue, you got, oh, that looks okay, but then when you actually go to play, we're missing a sprite layer, I guess, or we're missing, you know, there's no ship. So that's a big problem, you can't play with no ship, so. I was hoping, initially I was hoping uh, that I would be able to get one or the other to work correctly. And I wasn't. I was not able to, but I'm still going to show you process I went through because it was very helpful. Plug the sunny veil. Okay. <clears throat> and we can lose the TV at this point, I think. For the moment. It's funny, I had, for my temporary little rig here, I had a smaller uh, LCD TV set up to use and I couldn't get the darn thing to switch to the tuner station for it to pick up the signal from the Atari. Maybe I'm a complete idiot, but couldn't get it to do it. So for the teardown, basically it's 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 very basic. There's four screws here, here, and there's one sunk in here at an angle. 
Um, I've already removed those just to make it a little easier. You're going to need a couple things. So like one of them would be the screwdriver. And I, I'm going to use a, a butter knife. I know, it's really technical stuff here. So the easiest way to get this off is just to carefully... Keep in mind I've removed the screws already. Pop that out. And it's a, it's a little tricky to get all your so, your ports and switches and the all lined up correctly when you put the face back on. But come back here, pop it. Let's see. It's, a, it's very fidgety, very much so. Okay, so. Went ahead and took the face off. Make this cage and John Travolta face off. Okay, so let me make sure I got a good angle here. We'll zoom in a bit. Actually, let me get a. Try, I'm using a decent camera. Hoping this is going to be nice. It's actually my wife's camera. Okay, so there you go. You the got the face off. So you've got some metal, some tape here, and this is the RF shield. Um, there are little tabs on each side that you have to, that will be bent, uh, bent over just to keep it down, but I've already pre-bent those up, so obviously it comes out uh, nice and easy. And basically the troubleshooting that I did there's three chips in a 2600 board. I forget, honestly, I don't know about these two, but I'm pretty sure they are not cut, uh, you know, custom chips. Like you can come buy these if you need them. Uh, come across them, as from what I understand. But this right here. Is a TIA chip. This is a proprietary, uh, excuse me, proprietary chip. Uh, it's the television interface. Okay, so basically, as I went through my Sunnyvale and the the Vader and swapped each chip, I found no result, no change, no change when switching each of these. And when I got to the TIA ch chip, they switched symptoms. So I knew I had two bad. Or what I was sorry, I, I hypothesize that I have two bad TIA chips. So I was lucky enough to find online. There are many different versions of that chip for all the different versions of the 2600 and its, you know, illegitimate cousins that came out. Um, and so I found one online from let's see if I can get this in focus. 1980s Vintage Computers is the name of the little company. Okay, They shipped it in that and here it is. I have not tried this yet. This is a genuine moment for me. So what we're going to do now you can use a chip removal tool to get the chips out if you want. I've tried that as well, but actually I had a much harder time using that than I do just using this butter knife. So I just come in between the socket and the chip, give a little bit of a twist to get it a lift. Cut out a doer. And then just pull it out. Now the stupid part is, like I said, when I was trying to use a chip removal tool, I was butting against this capacitor here, and this, the blue capacitor there, that is not the original. I went down, this is my, one of my first successful soldering attempts right there, it was me replacing that capacitor. The one that came with it is a little bulgier and bigger. So, you know, 30 years later, that's what that same capacitor looks like. So, like I said, this is going to be the first time trying this chip. If I can get it out. This is supposed to be tested and working according to the posting. 
and I'm looking at the lettering on the chip because on this one it's the only chip that was upside down as far as the lettering so that would make it this way so I'm going to ever so carefully align every single leg and then just give it a firm push evenly so it's not to upset anything and okay we should be good to try this out so let me back this up here a bit Need to refocus a bit. All right, and I, I think we'll just try this out without putting the face back on, just for the sake of time, and because you know, I I wouldn't even if this was not being viewed by others. I would. I just don't want to wait. I waited long enough in the mail for this thing to come. So this is a moment of truth. I'm excited. And hopefully, we will have working asteroids. And when this video is done, I will play this Atari for several hours. Because I have a pretty... Let me show you guys. And man, Atari games are cheap. These days. I got a pretty good collection. I got a lot of doubles, too. But, uh... So, oh, and by the way, from when I got this uh, chip, the TIA chip, from uh, Vintage Computers, from these guys, it was $13.99 $13 shipped, I think, something ridiculously affordable like that, versus, you know, I saw the Sears version of the 2600 in a local game store. And I think they want 70 bucks for it or something like that. So if I, you know, if I could get one of these working for 13 bucks, that's pretty cool. And learn something in the process, too. My TV makes a neat noise because this TV was once part of a retail GameCube display. Alright, let's see if we get anything. Well, reset you got nothing? I got nothing, Captain! Do I have the chip ups in, in upside down? Maybe this one wants to be in the other way. I think that's what what is going on here. I hope so. Not I would be a sad, sad man. Oh, the legs look good. Said it was tested and working. Let's try it this way. Come on, Atari. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Guys. Do we have asteroids? Yes! We do! Holy... Holy heck. So, I'm really excited. Should we celebrate this moment by using a... See if we can use this aftermarket Genesis controller to play asteroids? Guys, so this is my first successful... Uh, repair of any... Oh, I guess this one doesn't work. I'm trying to use a six button. Anyhow, as you can see, you got... The ship is back. No graphical problems here. I will just do like a half second gameplay, just... But anyhow, I hope this video was helpful to somebody. Um, basically, yeah, I just used the logic of swapping chips. That's kind of just... Um, that's the basics of working on any kind of uh, motherboard. 
that you might have two of. So, and I mean reseeding chips, these are socketed chips. You know, if you've got an arcade board that's not working well, the very first thing to do is to reseat the chips. And it's really easy to do, you don't have to solder or anything. Obviously, I just did it really quickly, so. But yay! So there you go, guys. I'm, I'm, I have something to make me not feel so sad about my Retron problems. Yay! So that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys soon.